Uh, so let's have a look at a uh, public key encryption method called the knapsack. With knapsack, what we have is that we have an Envision knapsack and we have a number of weighted items. And what we want to do is to fill the knapsack so that it weighs a certain amount. Uh, Okay, so, so let's try one where we have weightings of 1, 4, 6, 8 and 15. So let's say there are ounces and we want to make them total 28 ounces. So we might take a 4, an 8, a 1 and a 15 and that gives us our total. So that gives us 28 then. So the way we can represent that is with a 1, a 4, no 6s, an 8 and a 15. Okay, and that gives us our weighting of 28. So there's the, there's the data that we would have, and we can represent that with uh, 28. If we had 15, say, we could represent 15 as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, no, no 1s, no 4s, no 6s, no 8s, but a 15. Okay, so how do we create a public and a private key with, with Knapsack? So what we often do uh, is that we have what's called a super increasing sequence. So a super increasing sequence is that the sum of the previous two is less than the next one. So in this case we have 1 and 2, that gives us 4, and then 2 and 6 gives us 9 is greater, and 20 and 38 and so on. This makes it much easier for us to be able to calculate the actual weightings that we're going to use because we can go through one at a time uh, and and if the value that we have is greater than the value we're looking at, then it's included in the knapsack. So let's try for 54. So 54 is greater than 38? Yes. So we must have a 1, so we have a 38. Now we take the difference and we end up with 16. So is 16 in with 20? Nope, that's not there, so we add that as a 0. Now we've tried a 16 with a 9. And that's there, so we make that a 1, then we've got a balance of 5. Then with 5 and 4, yes, that's greater, so we end up with a 1. We've now got a balance of 1, 1 and a 2. Nope, it's not there, so it's a 0. And then 1 for 1, yeah. So the value that we get, we read from the bottom up. So we get 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And that becomes our data. Okay, so... This is what's called the private key. If we don't have a super increasing knapsack, then it actually becomes quite difficult to determine the weights, uh, the, the mixture of the weights that we have. With super increasing, it's really easy. We can just go through and, and determine if the value is greater than the value we're looking at and then take the difference and so on. Okay, so the problem that we have uh, is that uh, the private key, which is super increasing, is easy, but we have a public key which is not super increasing and it actually becomes quite difficult to determine the weightings. Okay, so let's see if we can make our public key. So we're taking our private key as this, that's a super increasing sequence. And then what we get is a secret number, n, and then a value M, which is greater than the total. In this case, we'll make it 120, which is greater than, than those values there. We'll take an N of, say, 53, just to make things easy for us. Okay, so now we'll take our, our uh, super-increasing uh, private key, 1, 2, 10, 1, 2, 4, 10, 20, 40. And what we do is that we multiply it by the n value that we've got and then take the mod of the m value. So we get 53, 106, 92, 50, 180. So this now becomes our public key. Okay, so there's the, so that's our public key and that, that's a private key. So it should be very difficult for someone to take our public key and derive our private key from it. So let's try some data. So we've got six uh, values in our in our knapsack there. So we take our six bits at a time. Okay, so there's uh, our message. So we've got one, 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 zero, one, 
zero for the first one. So that's a, for a private key, that's a 53, a 106. And then we have a 92 and we have a 100. That gives us 351. Do the same for the next one, 53, and then a 92, and that's 275. And then for the next one, we've got our public key, take the values off, and then that's 331. So our ciphertext in this case is these three, three values. Now what we do is we find the inverse of this operation. So the inverse allows us to find that our n value times the inverse mod 120 in this case is equal to 1. So if we want to do it the long-handed way, we could try lots of different values of, of n inverted in there. All the way down there and we get to the value of 77. 53 times 77 mod 120 is equal to, to 1. So I'll just show you that working. Okay, so we'll find a calculator here. So 53 times, uh, we'll just check, 77 is equal to that. And then we take the mod of 120. And we get one, so that that works. Okay, so that's the that's the calculation that we do. If you want, there's a calculator here that we can actually use to determine the inverse. So we'll just give it a little try, just to make sure it's working. And there we go, and it's found seventy-seven. Okay, so now what we do now that we have the value of seventy-seven, we take our encoded values our cipher text and plug them in but this time you use 77 uh, and we know the value of uh, 120 and then th that then we do the calculation again we get 27 55 and 47 okay so that's the values as a, as an output Okay, so remember this value is secret. Our private key uh, keeps the value of 120 secret. All we have to do is to release uh, our public key, which is this. Our private key becomes this value here, plus our n value, and plus our m value. Okay, so this is us receiving the value here. So 27, if we look at our knapsack, becomes a 1 and 2, a 4 and a 20, and so on. So then the decoded values that we have are that, which is hopefully the same as the original value that we actually have. Okay, so that's our knapsack uh, public encryption method. So what we'll do is we'll give it, we'll give it a little try and see, see if it can work out. So here's a knapsack here. That's a private key. If we take a value of n of 588, a value of m of this, and then some data, then we can calculate a public key to be this. We can see this is non-super increasing. And then the cipher, uh, because we have eight values there, there's eight bits. This just happens to be an h. There's our cipher. We take the inverse of the values that we've got, 588 eight, and 881, eight, and we get 442, four, and then we can use that to be able to determine the, uh, the result, which is there. Okay, so there's a whole lot of examples that you can actually try out uh, on the page, and you can give it a go. Unfortunately for uh, Ralph Merkel, who, who came up with the idea, it was cracked within a few years uh, and a methodology was determined to, to be able to break it. But it's still a valid uh, method and uh, you can see the basic principles of it is to have a simple private key and then a complex public key, which is very difficult to find the original uh, values. 
of the private key, in this case without knowing uh, these two values here. Okay, we really need to keep this secret. If it's secret, then it's actually very difficult for uh, the code to be deciphered. Okay, and that's been an introduction to knapsack encryption.